Hey, it's Cindy again. We are working in Module 3, customizing the QuickBooks environment, and we're down to Section 3, where we're going to talk a little bit about the chart of accounts. Now, this is Part 1. There are two parts to this video. Make sure you watch both parts. A lot of what we've been doing is setup, because you want to make sure that QuickBooks is set up correctly before you start working so you don't have any issues as you go along. The most important part of QuickBooks is the chart of accounts. I can't stress that enough. Every single thing you do is going to relate back to one of the accounts in the chart of accounts. Let me go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks and I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll go ahead and customize it. We're here on our home screen and the way you're going to open the chart of accounts is right here. It says chart of accounts. I briefly showed you this a little bit earlier when we were going through the preferences and I was showing you how to turn these general ledger numbers on or off over on the left. Just as a review, if you want to turn them on or off, you go back up to edit, you go down to preferences, this is going to be all the way at the top under the group called accounting, you want to be under company preferences, and you can check or uncheck this use account numbers. And then when you click OK, you're going to see you've turned them on or off. Everything in QuickBooks relates back to one of these, so it's very important that you have them all set up and that they're set up correctly. What I'd like to do is take some time and go through this with you so that you know which ones you'll need to set up and how to choose the proper type when you set them up. So this might be a good place for you to get your pen and paper and take some notes. You'll notice this list is set up by different types over here. And if you have some types that are same like these expense accounts, they're going to be in alphabetical order like I said, or they'll be in numerical order if you have the numbers turned on. But let's start at the top because the first type that you'll want to set up are what we call bank accounts. Right now, if you wanted to write a check, you don't even have a bank account to write one out of, so you need to set that up. Now when we talk about bank accounts, here's a list of the different accounts you'll want to create. Any checking savings, money market accounts that you have. You set them each up separately. Some companies have a little petty cash box they keep in the office with a hundred bucks in it. You may want to set that up as a bank account. That's kind of up to you. You'll also want to set up a bank account if you have a lot of small cash expenditures that go out. A lot of small business owners will spend cash for things that are legitimate business expenses. And if you want to track those, they have to have some way to get into QuickBooks. I would actually call those accounts cash expenditures. Also, if you use PayPal or if you accept Square or a lot of people are starting to accept Bitcoin now, all of those are bank accounts. You set them up like you would any bank account and if you need to move money for example out of PayPal into checking that's just a transfer that's all that is but those are bank accounts. Let me show you how to set up any new account and we're going to start with bank accounts and set up our checking. You can actually right click anywhere that's the easiest way and here you're going to see your new edit delete and make inactive. I did want to mention that if you didn't right click at the very bottom left of your screen it says account and here's the same options right here. I wanted to point out the delete option. Any list in QuickBooks, if you've ever used an item from that list even one time, you can't delete it. And that's because it plays into your numbers so you really shouldn't be able to delete it. But if you don't want to see it on the list you can make it inactive. A good example would be a bank account you use for a while and then you close that account. You can make it inactive which hides it from this list and then if you want to activate it you could at any time. You would do that by clicking this little checkbox at the very bottom that says include inactive and then they would show up. But let's go ahead and set up our bank account. I just right clicked anywhere and I'm going to choose new and here's where it asks what type of account is this and we're going through all of these but this is a bank account. Here's some more examples, like I mentioned, of what bank accounts might be. I'm going to hit continue. And if you forget and you pick the wrong type on the previous screen, they give you another choice here to pick the correct type. You can name your bank account anything you want to call it. I'm going to call mine checking, 
but in real life if you wanted to call it the name of your bank or if you want to call one operating and one payroll you can call them anything you want as long as you know what that is this is not a sub account of another one I'll get into that in a little bit you do have a place for a description so if you wanted to say this is the operating account someone would have to be on this screen to actually see this so that's why it's an optional thing you do not need your bank account or your routing number in here. Do not fill these in. It's more of an informational type field. One thing you will need though is the opening balance. QuickBooks has to know what amount of money to start with and a date. You can always enter something prior to this and if you don't know how much your ending balance is you can always stick a penny in there and change it later. But I'll just put $1,000 in there for now, and I'll pick the beginning of this month, let's say. Now, a couple things. When you're typing in money in QuickBooks, you cannot put dollar signs. It'll put the comma in for you automatically. You would just type the 1,000 period like I did, and then it would populate it for you. Let's talk about the date a little bit. What date should you start with? In QuickBooks, you will want to start with the beginning of the fiscal year as one choice, Let's say it's October and you just purchased QuickBooks. It's up to you if you want to go back to January 1 and enter everything or the beginning of your fiscal year. I'd make it correspond with your bank statement. I'm going to click OK here and you can see it says I have $1,000 as of 10-1. Now just a quick little nice thing. If you write a lot of checks, you can have it pop up when you reach a certain check number and tell you to order some more. And by the way, if you use checks, you do not have to buy them from Intuit. You can buy them anywhere you like. You're going to see all over QuickBooks there are options for Save and Close and Save and New. Save and Close means save this, close it, and it'll show you the screen behind this. Save and New means save this and put me on a new blank one because I have another bank account to enter. I'm going to Save and Close and you're going to see that there is a checking account right back here. Now what this is, just so you'll know, is if you want to set up bank feeds, meaning you want to do online banking, they are encouraging you to go ahead and do that now. But we're not going to do it right now, we'll talk about that later. Here's your checking account and you can see that you have a thousand dollars in there. Now you don't need to know this because most of you aren't accountants, but anytime you have a debit, you have a credit for something. And just to show you the offsetting entry, it's right here where it says opening balance equity and there's your thousand dollars. Let me go ahead and set up a savings account. We'll go through the same process and I'll show you again how this works. I'm going to right click and choose new. I'm going to choose a bank account and click continue. I'm going to call this one savings and I'm going to come down and enter the opening balance as $5,000. I'll go ahead and set it for 10-1 and click OK and then save and close. Now you'll notice that I have a thousand in my checking and five thousand in my savings and opening balance equity is now six thousand. By the way if your opening balance equity is ever a negative number that's an actual picture of what your books look like so don't change that. Let's go ahead and talk about the next type which would be your asset accounts. You'll see there's a few of these here. An asset is something that makes your business more valuable. You might have inventory for example. You might actually have property, you might have vehicles, chairs, desks, lamps, all of those are assets to your business. What you want to do in QuickBooks is set up all of your asset accounts as big buckets. That means don't set up one for every vehicle you own, set up one called vehicles. Here's a list of some common ones that you'll see set up that you can throw items into. Remember you want this list to be between 7 to 10, no more than that because no one wants to read a 100 page balance sheet or a profit and loss that's really long so make sure that you keep this at a minimum. QuickBooks does not do depreciation, just so you'll know that. And that's because there's so many different ways to do it, and that's where your accountant's going to be very helpful to you. So make sure that you get with your accountant on how to set up your asset accounts. You're going to see two terms in accounting when dealing with assets. You're going to have fixed assets, which are things you plan to keep long term. That would be the building, the vehicle, and so forth. And you also have liquid assets, which QuickBooks calls other current. 
Those are things like inventory, for example. You're worth more right now because you have those chairs in the back room, but your goal is to sell them and get them out the door. So that's how your assets should be set up. And you need those because if you go to the bank, for example, to get a loan, they're going to want to know where your assets are. Let's go ahead and stop the video now. I want you to go ahead and go over to part two with me and we'll continue talking about how to set up this chart of accounts. Hey everyone, Simon here. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe to our channel so you get notified of new videos that we upload. Click over there to get a free two hour course to learn the essentials of QuickBooks 2018. And click over there to get the complete list of videos in this playlist. I'll see you next week with additional videos.